Why did you drive like that, you fool? We might have been killed. Worse than that, monsieur. We might have been caught. Caught? By whom? Those men you spoke to? They are not men, monsieur. They are dead bodies. Zombies. The living dead. Corpses taken from the grave, made to work in the sugar mills in the fields at night. Hi, I'm Bobby, and recently I was at Voodoo Donuts. Being in the mood for more voodoo and for more donuts, I'm going to review the movie where Bela Lugosi plays a voodoo master, White Zombie. For Bela fans, this is one of the movies where he was the most creatively involved. And for zombie fans, this is considered the first zombie movie. So, why don't you sit back and relax as we take a look at White Zombie. In today's pop culture, zombies are usually seen as flesh-eating monsters. Or as a groovy cocktail. But in Haiti, they are a respected and feared part of the voodoo religion, which is the main religion there. Sorcerers, known as bokors, use black magic to make the dead rise and serve them, typically as a form of punishment or to create slave labor. Stories of these zombies found their way into the non-fiction book The Magic Island and the short-lived play Zombie. And these works inspired the independent producers, the Halperin brothers, to make White Zombie. And they cast Bela Lugosi as the voodoo sorcerer. Bela became a star in Universal Studios' production of Dracula. But his next horror movie for them, Murders in the Rue Morgue, didn't do as well. And Universal became more interested in their Frankenstein star, Boris Karloff, and chose not to renew Bela Lugosi's contract. So Bela, who always spent money as fast as he made it, agreed to do the independent film White Zombie for $500. Although some sources say he got paid as much as $5,000. Regardless of his low salary, when I met his son, he said that this was one of the movies that his dad was most proud of because he actually got to direct some of it. When Bela first came to America, he directed plays in the Hungarian theater community, so he had experience. Plus, these claims were verified by actor Clarence Muse, who stated that Bela rewrote, restaged, and directed some of the scenes, and by the fact that no other Halpern Brother movie contains so much visual style. The budget was only $62,500 with an 11-day shooting schedule. But don't be afraid yet because the Halperins rented sets and props from Universal Studios, so they were able to use the King of Kings set, the Frankenstein set, and of course, the Dracula set. And they had access to Universal's genius makeup man, Jack Pierce. And with Bela sinking his teeth into the acting, writing, and directing, they were able to make a low-budget horror classic. In Haiti, zombies created by voodoo master Murder Le Genre work in his sugar mill at night. Two Americans, Madeline and Neil, are going to be married at Monsieur Beaumont's plantation. However, Beaumont is actually in love with Madeline and goes to Murder Le Genre for help to win Madeline's affection. Murder suggests that he turn her into a zombie. Beaumont is revolted, but it's the only way. So Beaumont gives her the poison on a flower, and Murder performs the spell. At first, Neil thinks Madeline is dead, but he has a drunken vision of her still alive, and finds her grave empty. He goes to Dr. Bruner, who realizes it must be voodoo, and the two men go to Murder's castle to save Madeline. As the first zombie movie is closer to its Haiti roots, so these zombies aren't going to eat you. <laughs> Instead, what makes them creepy is how they coexist with the living, and how anyone can become one. From the start of the movie, you feel the exotic and haunting atmosphere. Now, I don't know about the real Haiti, but this place is filled with strange superstitions and rituals. It's a funeral, Manzel. They're afraid of the men who steal dead bodies. 
So they dig the grave in the middle of the road where people pass all of the time. And magic and mysterious witch doctors. It seems like a natural place for zombies. At night, zombies wander around outside. They work in sugar mills. They drive carriages. They're just part of existence. Workers and servants are afraid of them, and the wealthy try to ignore them. Kind of like most problems. Now, if murder tells his zombies to kill someone, they will. So they do pose an actual threat. But most of the time, it's just the creepy factor of having to interact with a dead body. Now, we've all seen dead bodies, at least at funerals. And for a lot of us, they are creepy. So it's an easy situation to relate to. But now we have to sit next to them. We have to touch them. And we have to let them touch us. To Beaumont, these are just nameless monsters. But murder explains who each one of his collection is. <laughs> Zombies! Yes, they are my servants. Did you think we could do it alone? In their lifetime, they were my enemies. Lovo, the witch doctor, once my master, whose secrets I tortured out of him. Chauvin, the high executioner, who almost executed me. I took them, just as we shall take this one. But what if they regain their souls? They would tear me to pieces. But that, my friend, shall never be. It's one of my favorite scenes, because you wonder how much of their soul is left behind that emotionless face. Especially with the executioner. Is he still ready to kill? And by him explaining who they were as people, you kind of relate to them as such. And you can't help but think how terrifying it must be to become a zombie. And you realize, murder can turn anyone into one. And he does. He slowly and tortuously turns Beaumont into one. And that's what the people who are really afraid of zombies are actually afraid of. Becoming one. So it's authentic, pretty easy to imagine, and eerie. And speaking of eerie, let's talk about Mr. Bela Lugosi. I have other plans for Mademoiselle. And I'm afraid you might not agree. I have taken a fancy to you, monsieur. Vail Lugosi plays the voodoo master, or Bokor, murder legendary. And not to judge, but when someone's name is murder, they're usually a pretty bad dude. We only know bits and pieces about his background, but it's enough to feed our imagination. Now, Jack Pierce from Universal did the makeup. And with that outfit and Bela's evil smile, he absolutely looks like Satan. And he acts like him too. And he just relishes in trapping Beaumont. I have looked into her eyes. She is deep in love. But not with you. They're to be married in an hour. There must be a way. There is a way. <gasps> no! Not that! Only a pinpoint, Monsieur Beaumont, in a glass of wine, or perhaps a flower. Send me word when you use it. He gets to be sadistic, and what no one ever talks about, he gets to use some of his really well done comic timing. I especially like that gesture. Now, in terms of Bela's writing and directing, we don't know what were his ideas and what were the Halperins, or what they may have thought of together. But he had played Dracula on stage hundreds of times, along with doing the movie. And White Zombie has a fantastic understanding of what made his Dracula scary, and it does it on steroids. Like the Count, Murder Legendary is a suave master of evil. Now most of Dracula takes place in the drawing room, but here, the ambiance matches his personality with cemeteries, castles, and a screeching vulture. And he's always physically positioned to look as spooky as possible. In Dracula, his intense eyes were used to hypnotize his victims. 
Here they go a step further, and they do an effect where they're superimposed on the screen, as if he could always be watching. Also in Dracula, his hands horrified audiences, so they do plenty of close-ups of them. And these are the hands that make the voodoo dolls, so they're significant to the story. Bela's physical movement is so graceful, every flick of his finger is perfect, like a ritual, and it makes you believe that he could perform magic. As for the rest of the characters, both in terms of writing and acting, it's hit or miss, and this is where you see the low budget. Most of the cast were former silent movie actors. Madge Bellamy, who plays Madeline, had been a huge star. Robert Fraser, who plays Beaumont, had been the original Robin Hood. But they are struggling with adapting their techniques to sound, and it was a hard adjustment. And it makes it difficult to become interested in their characters. Now, along with my own criticism, White Zombie was also criticized when it first came out. When White Zombie came out in 1932, it was considered outdated. How do you like that, Gramps? And while they do some innovative shots, there is some merit to this argument. I already talked about the problem with the silent movie actors. Some of the scenes are actually done in the style of a silent movie, with no dialogue and just music. And aside from the zombies, the story is very much an old-fashioned and predictable melodrama. No wonder it seemed dated in 1932. But now it's 2019, and almost every movie from 1932 seems dated. So now, those aspects actually give it a unique flavor. It has some of that living nightmare quality that some silent horror films have, and Bela's theatricality complements that style. It's like the best parts of a silent and sound horror movie combined. Unfortunately, not all aspects have gotten better with time. If you're not used to 1930s horror movies, the pacing is going to seem slow. Also, because the movie's in public domain, depending on your copy, the picture and sound quality might not be so hot. I recommend it on this restored Blu-ray. For me, it made all the difference in the world. While not as big as Dracula or Frankenstein, for an independent film in 1932, White Zombie did amazing at the box office. In 1936, the Hasbro brothers did a sequel, Revolt of the Zombies, which didn't feature Bela Lugosi and didn't have the visual style of the first film. White Zombie became a favorite of a young man named Robert Cummings, whom you may know as Rob Zombie, and he named his band White Zombie after the film. Author Bram A. Braddock has written a book prequel to White Zombie titled Memoirs of Murder, and rumor has it that Blumhouse Studios will be doing a remake. White Zombie's not perfect, but it has a fantastic Bela Lugosi role, and you can count on that creepy atmosphere. So I... Give it three voodoo dolls out of four. He's had a rough day. Thank you for watching Dusty Old Movies. And next time you're out, why don't you order yourself a zombie? Which was invented two years after this movie.